Yo, everybody. It's go time. Forgive my unprofessional decor today. Came from exercising. Okay. A little CrossFit shout out. And then uh, threw on a backwards hat so you guys wouldn't see what real bedhead looks like. Like, not, this isn't, you know, this is like rated R bedhead. The kind of thing I'm rocking when I have bedhead and then go work out. I mean, I've been told I, uh, you know, frighten children. So, um, anyway, but we're going to have a lot of fun today. We're going to jump right into this bullet brawl. Welcome, welcome, welcome. The challenges have already begun to commence. Right, I feel like uh, Shao Kahn. It has begun. Shao Kahn, is it? Isn't it Shao Kahn? Mortal Kombat, stack guy. Check on that, buddy. Stack, check on that, buddy. All right. Well, the challenges are out of control. So many people. Let's start with the first one that came in. J S Kantom One. Welcome, welcome, J S Kantom One. I'm hoping I can keep up with you today. I'm playing a weird line of the Caro. I just figured out that I could do this the other day. Like a weird, it's like a weird Verisoft Caro where I might castle as long. I might not. You don't know, right? That's what makes it so exciting. Anything could happen. Um, probably Bishop B4 is good for him here, though. Yeah. And after I cackle, if he takes, okay, he should take it. Because now that I can relocate the knight, I'm able to sort of fix the structure with c3 next move. And that's going to create a pawn chain that is solid enough for me to then focus on the king side without too much worry about counterplay. Um, so I'm actually going to put the queen on c2. Uh, maybe d2 was better because he's going to put a rook on c8 now. Ugh. Yeah, rook on c8 will threaten to take on d4. So I'm going to play a3 and anticipate that he's still going to put a rook on c8 and I'm going to move my queen off or play a rook to d1. Yeah, that probably works just as well. Although maybe not. Wow. Not not good chess for me right now. I apologize. I apologize to anyone who cares about the fact that I'm not playing great chess. Uh, the problem for black right now is this is a minority attack structure where he really wants to drive the B-pawn, but he's not in a position to do that. So despite my sort of bumblings, right? Despite my... Uh, my Frodo Bagginsing. Um, I uh, he wasn't really ever in an ideal position um, to uh, to get the attack going on the on the on the queen side, which is where he needs to play. At first, you would think I should take, but I don't think so. I think just backing up the bishop to go hit that d3 pawn is in fact better. All right, well, now he's just down on time, unfortunately for him, so he's doing his best to pre-move to avoid losing, but unfortunately was not was not in the cards for him to avoid losing. I'm going to have to um, give you guys one second. We're going to throw up a we'll be right back uh, sign just to... Uh, there's just a lot of stuff going on right now, chess.com. Some of you guys probably know about it, some of you don't. Just dealing with some different stuff, and I've been waiting for this person to get back to me kind of critical. So you guys are going to buckle up. Go get your popcorn. I know what you're thinking. You sat down, and you were like, oh, I don't want to miss Danny's show, but I don't have my coffee. Well, guess what? You're welcome. Go get that coffee. Go get that tea, and be back in just a sec.
All right, I promised, I promised it would not be long. All right. <laughs> yeah, uh, go ahead and share that in the chat, Josh. Somebody just gave me the six second clip of Shao Kahn. I was right, it is Shao Kahn. Doing the It Has Begun. There's probably like a dramatic scene in Lord of the Rings too, where someone's like, so it begins, or it is, I feel like there's something with that too. But anyway, um, let's move on. Welcome to the next player, Anxious Rhino. What does a rhino get anxious about? I mean, does a rhino get like digestive issues in the rest of in front of the rest of the rhinos, right? And then he's you know he's kind of embarrassed, you know. He want yeah you know, maybe he's got a lady rhino he's trying to impress. Like what exactly doesn't does a rhino get anxious about? Is he like just is his horn just not as big as the other rhinos? You know, I'm talking about his horn right here. <laughs> I didn't mean for that to come out the way it did, but it was funny. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, what does a rhino get anxious about? I don't know. You tell me. Let's have a, let's have a pop quiz. Somebody somebody tell me exactly what a rhino gets anxious about, please. Poachers. Someone just said poachers. That's a good one. That's a that's a that's a reasonable thing to be anxious about, right? I mean, the chances of a poacher coming after you are, I mean, that's a real. I wouldn't even, I mean, you know, that's a that's a real issue, right? That's a real world problem. That's not a it's not a you know first world problem like we get upset when our iPhone isn't downloading email fast enough, right? That's like a that's a real world issue. You know what I'm talking about? So. Rhinos get anxious about poachers. Has anybody got anything else good? Apparently, my thoughts about his horn not being big enough or digestive issues were a little bit off kilter. I apologize for that. Next player, chess fan one. Let's do this thing. Welcome to the Bullet Brawl. You're welcome. Your day just got better. Actually, it didn't because I'm going to crash you. Yeah, we can do this like Hans and Franz. I'm going to crash you. I'm going to crash you. Man, I'm 25-26? I don't even remember playing Bullet that well. What is wrong with me? <sighs> That's pretty sweet. I haven't played Bullet or these last two days. I feel like I've just been, like, you know, out of my body, you know, operating in the third realm astral world, looking down on myself. All right, sorry, chess fan one, you walked away, but that's your problem. Joss Tim, welcome to the show. I've never played you before. Joss Tim. Joss Tim? Is that is that like a is that like a version of like, you know, Jehovah, Josiah, J J Jamaica? I don't know. I mean, it seems like Joss Tim is not one name. That would be a little weird. Um maybe it's the beginning of your first name and the beginning of your last name. I don't know. I don't know, Captain. What I do know is the bullet brawl continues. The train keeps trucking. E5 is coming. Oh, that feels so nice. That feels so good. But Josh, Josh Tim is playing well. He's playing well right now. I'm not going to lie. Feels like he, uh, like it's not his first time trying to play a stronger player bullet. He's playing quickly, but also keeping accurate moves on the board. A lot of people, when they play bullet, like when they move that fast, you can just tell that they're, you know, a hop, skip, and a jump away from blundering. Because, um,. Because they're just not managing their because they're they're managing the time well, but just about nothing else. But this guy seems to know what he's doing. I thought he was gonna play rook c4, which might go pick up that pawn, but then bishop f8 takes and then d5 still would have been okay for me. Uh yeah, I think I can do that. I think I can. I think I can. I think I can do that. And I thought I would have more here. I thought I would have more. Ah, yeah, he took with the bishop. That was a blunder. He should have taken with the pawn because then I didn't have what I'm about to have now, which is rook d1 check, and then I pick up the knight. Game over, Red Rover. Um, so he was actually playing well, Joss Tim. We'll go ahead and give him a little backup. We'll go ahead and review what happened here because I'm curious where I sort of lost the thread because I, I, I thought my position was worse. I thought my position was worse. My goal is down to get some sort of discovery. Aha, uh -huh, he sees it coming, so I'll just trade. Okay, unfortunate, right? You poor unfortunate soul. What Disney movie is that? It's sad, but true, right? If you want to be with Charming, there's a price you have to pay. Nothing too big, just your voice. 
poor unfortunate souls. I didn't even know I knew that song. You know, it just starts like coming back and the lyrics are like, oh my gosh, I remember Ursula's song from uh, Little Mermaid. Okay, so um, this is this is all fine for him. I mean, this is it's not it's not the most ambitious opening for White. Obviously, normally when this structure is taken on, White is going to play G three and Bishop G two with a King's Indian attack. Uh, the main reason is that it's a little bit easier to expand your pawn chain in a given direction when you have more minor pieces on that side of the board. So the point is, like, if they play G three in here and the King is safe, they're a little bit more confident to move this knight and then drive that f-pawn up the board to create an attack. The other thing is whenever you face a Sicilian structure, if you don't play an open Sicilian, by definition you're going to have a pawn chain like this, and so you're going to want to get this attack. So I'm not just suggesting that this is a more normal way to get the pawn chain attack you know, randomly. I'm saying that's probably White's best plan, so this sort of development is, is a passive one at best. But it's solid, you know, and this plan I take here with, with uh, bishop takes f3 and then knight d4, Maybe not necessary, because my opponent didn't play the most ambitious kind of attack. The other thing I can do is maybe just play like rook e8. The whole point, everybody, is that if he plays bishop h6, I can just back up the bishop to h8 without worrying about that. Um, this is a good thing for all of you to note out there. If you play a, a Fianchetto system, whether it's a dragon or a king's Indian, you want to evaluate, do you want to allow this trade or not? Sometimes it's in your interest to just let them do it. You know why? Because, you know, if you make a move, by the time they're done doing all of this, you've gained two other moves to get an attack going, and have they really made your king that much weaker? I don't know, right? So that's one way to think about it. But the other thing is that your bishop is a very strong piece. So sometimes it's worthy of the prophylactic move you know, playing like rook to e8 so that you can meet bishop h6 with bishop f8. Do I have some sort of like Danny's universal rule for when it's good to play rook e8 and when it's good to play, you know, just go for an attack? No, I don't, okay, because I'm a human being, all right? I don't have all the answers, all right? Deal with that. Um, but in this case, I kind of decided for a totally different plan, which is much more like a, um, a closed Sicilian plan where I want to put a knight on d4, Probably he should just play bishop h6. h3 is kind of a waste, because that's exactly what I went there to do to begin with. And I don't know. This is not necessarily that great if I'm black and I'm trying to win, because it's an obstacle bishop position. And, you know, I can't really claim to have an advantage here. He plays the right approach with c3. Um, and then we kind of play tickle on the queen side till for a while. But but he played well. He played well in this game. I would just say that his middle game was, I mean, his opening and development strategy was not great. You know, um... So he was never really in a position to be better. That's what I would say. But with the c file and things that happened, it should have just been equal all the way to that point, if you remember, where he took on e4 with the bishop, which allowed me to take, take, and check. See, if he had taken with the pawn, remember, I couldn't give check because the rook would have guarded. So the position probably would have been a draw, at least on the board. I would have flagged him because I have no shame. But it would have been a draw on the board. Next opponent. You know what? I love this name. Panic Puppet? <laughs> what exactly does a puppet have to panic about? Um, that the person's hand is too big. Uh, maybe that the person's hand is too small. Can't reach all of its, you know, all the things it needs to do. Um, what else? I'm reaching here, guys. What is it? What does a puppet have a puppet have to panic about? I'm really into abstract thinking right now, and so that involves a lot of unnecessary, uh, like you know, diving into thinking about things that are really basically completely ridiculous. It involves a lot of that. I'm real good at that. Okay, look at this. I'm going to do something weird. I'm going to do something weird. It's going to get weird. It's going to get real weird, Billy Bob. Oh, man, I'm like a... I feel like a... I feel like I'm running around like a chicken with my head cut off. You know what I mean, Billy? I'm like a... I'm like crazy right now. It's going to get real, real weird. Oh, man, I think I just blundered night you five. I'm about to get checkmated. I'm going to lose this game. That's the real truth. That's what's going to happen. I better play fast and flag this guy. That's what you got to do in bullets sometimes. Sometimes you just got to flag him. No shame, man. I ain't got nothing to say about it. Besides, I'm going to flag him. I'm going to do my best to flag him. I ain't going to guarantee victory or nothing because my position is completely lost. My position is completely lost. Ain't no ifs, ands, or buts about it, Billy. Who is Billy? I don't know, but I'm talking about him like I know him. Ooh, wait, that's a knight. That's a knight. No, can't do it. Got to guard d7, right? What's going on here? What's going on with that? I don't even know. He's trying to checkmate me, love. I think he lost the thread. 
I think he got pretty excited about the chance of beating me, which I would too when I'm using that obnoxious accent. I would have been just as excited for him. Um, oh man, I'm blundering away the game. I'm blundering away the game, everybody. I have no, I have no recourse. I'm gonna lose. He's still going to win. What is going on? He's going to win the game. I can flag him. Can I flag? I flagged him. Is that not a work of art? I think he deserves a second game. The panic puppet played like a puppet who was on top of his game. Okay, that wasn't a puppet who was nervous. All right. I'm uh I'm going to play you again because you deserve it. Sorry I had to flag you, but um that's part of the deal. You flag people when you're lost in bullet. It happens. It's life. All right, we're playing the four pawns attack right now. We're just going to rock rock these pawns up the board and go get it. What in the world? We'll go attack him that way, because if he takes c4, he loses a piece. He apparently is not familiar with this trick, a very important trick to be aware of. Whenever there's a knight on c4, there's always a threat of queen a4 check. Don't ever miss that threat. I think I'm going to make up for my terrible game against Panic Puppet last time. Ooh, I had knight c7, right? Ooh, right. That would have been so much better. Um. Anyway. What in the world? i tell you what, Billy. I'm about to go crazy up in here. Do you guys ever see my Barkley impression? That's another thing I do. I know I've been real focused on Wahlberg and country accents, but I'm, I'm not that bad at Barkley. I'll try to think of a, a good thing to say. What does Barkley normally say? I don't even know. Nobody knows what Barkley says. Like, literally, even when he's speaking regularly, no one knows what he's talking about. That's the thing about Barkley. That's like his thing. All right, I'm up a piece and easily winning. Just taking a little bit to uh, safeguard the big guy, the old number one. The old number one. I could have just taken his bishop. But I saw his threat of queen e2 check, and I instinctively stopped it. That's what happened. Ooh, we like that. We like that even more. Uh, Chekalina Lashlamba. <laughs> Get off the floor, Shaq. <laughs> That's a good one. That's probably something that, that Barkley would say. Um, Kobe Bryant. No. The Phoenix Sun. Wait, hold on. No, I I've lost the one. The Spurs moving the ball. Man, the Suns don't play defense. Ernie, I'm going to tell you what. Kim Jong-il blowing up the world. That's crazy. Um, anyway, maybe not my best word. All right, Gartholomew. I think I've played Gartholomew before. That's right, he's got a Yoda. A Yoda. A Yoda avatar, my favorite. A Yoda avatar. I played Gartholomew recently. When When was that? I don't remember, Kenny. Kenny, I play basketball with the best in the world. Man, the Suns and the Spurs, they don't play defense. Ooh, delicioso, right? Take there, give check, keep his king in the center. Don't pre-move knight f3 in case he's watching the show and he thinks, oh, I'll pre-move b5 because he's going to pre-move knight f3. Only make pre-moves you could get away with no matter what they respond to when you're playing a live, a live show. That is something I learned because I never knew who was actually watching the show, right? So, like, I had a guy beat me by taking advantage of a pre-move in that way. And from then on, I learned my lesson. From then on, I learned that no man can be trusted. Before there was the universe, there was darkness.
that was Anthony Hopkins, by the way. And Thor, don't worry, about it. don't worry about it. You know, I don't know. I don't need you guys to compliment my impressions. I get it. You know, don't worry about it. I totally get it. It's like I totally know that you guys already know what I'm doing. So I totally get it. So don't even worry about it. All right. Um, what just happened in Gartholomew's game? This was a Staunton Gambit. That's where you sack a center pawn after F5 specifically because you're trying to pry open the light squares. This is everybody's favorite way to play against the Dutch, or at least it's my way, okay? And uh, I definitely recommend looking into it if anybody doesn't quite have a system against the Dutch or if you're just frustrated that you're not reaching your, normally queen, your normal Queen's Gambit positions. Uh, be principled in your approach in choosing openings. Don't, don't, I've given advice to players when they're younger, um, or with limited studying to try to develop repertoires where, you know, depending on what your system is with e4 and d4, you you try to constantly drive the position towards similar structures and formations where the where the tactics that occur in the middle game aren't always news to you, right? You're familiar with the patterns, and it's a very important thing to do. It's part of getting better at chess is basically just pattern recognition. So you can sort of you can you can you can. Increase the learning curve. Wait, increasing the learning curve takes longer, so you can slow the learning curve? What is that? Anyway, you can get better faster, okay, if you're playing positions that are similar and that you're familiar with the patterns all the time. So you should ask a coach to help you develop a repertoire like that. I've had a lot of people send me messages on chess.com and ask me just that, and I try to give the best advice I can. But um, one of the things that you'll see the best players do is, is they're principled in their, in their approach. Because as you get to a point where you know the positions, you should choose things that make sense as far as what you understand strategically is flawed about, about an opening. So you're playing what the position knows is best, not just a system that you're comfortable with. And so you're not always forcing things just to be in your own little world of comfort zone. You're trying to push yourself to kind of expand. So, and I think, okay, I'm not saying that E4 is better than even the main line. I mean, I mean the, the main lines with C4 and, and the principled move with his being catering this bishop, which is another really common and good way to deal with the Dutch because you control the light squares and you can play for E4 later. Um, but, but E4 right away, that's the Staunton Gambit. It's a principled Gambit. And it usually gets really good positions and fun stuff. You open it up and you just get wild and crazy and you castle long and you just, you know, you go to town. It's uh, it's right up my alley, obviously, right? Let's take on Choco Nut because that reminds me of there's something about Mary. You know, Coco Nut. Coco Nut. There's something about Mary. I don't know why. It was one of the first experiences I had of laughing so inappropriately around like people you you know when you watch a movie that is like really offensive and like kind of some not necessarily vulgar but some some uh some really crass some really some really uh really uh tough humor you know not everyone's going to appreciate it and that's for sure right there's something about mary is one of those movies and um i just found it so so funny and i was watching it with people that didn't find it funny and they're like friends of yours right but they're not that good of friends so it's kind of inappropriate that you're that you're just like dying of laughter and they're like looking at you like i cannot even believe you right now like you are just ridiculous like that kind of look like their look literally says all of those things you know so um so that's something that happened i don't know i'm just sharing today today i'm just sharing sharing is caring um so I, uh, I had that experience, and There's Something About Mary was my first movie that really gave me that experience of, of, of being so inappropriately. It just, like, it just thought it was so funny, you know. Anyway, so I know everyone's had those experiences. And sometimes it's just a mood thing, because then you see it later, and you're like, oh, this movie's funny, but it wasn't that funny, right? Like I, but I was just, you think it's so funny, and, and that's, uh, sometimes that's what happens. I should probably focus on beating Choco Nut. Because uh, we don't have that much time, though I'm completely winning. We're going to open up the F file, go after the rook, and we put the knight on g5. So we're going to do here, love. So I'm going to play knight h7, next move. Oh, right. No, we're going to play bishop d6, almost checkmate. But almost checkmate is kind of like almost famous. This isn't horseshoes or hand grenades, right? This ain't horseshoes or hand grenades, or rat. Now, let me give you a little piece of advice here, Choco Nut. When, when y'all play the perk, y'all need to be careful about this system with F4 coming so fast. Because White's about to blow open the dark squares like, 
like tomorrow's uncle, tomorrow's oil break. That's something that someone from Texas would say, tomorrow's oil break. Come on, that's good, right? They're about to blow up in the center like tomorrow's oil break, and it's really important that you understand the theory in this line because it's like playing the dragon, Yugoslav attack, but without without knowing all the theory. It's like you don't just go walking into a dangerous desert without a ninja sword and nunchucks. You know what I'm talking about? It's like don't play sharp lines unless you're going to know what you're doing. So you played the C5 move, which is a principled idea, but it's not the best. Um, the best move is h6 right here, right now. What you do is you kick this bishop back. And the main reason is so that when you play c5 now, before castling, if I, if I try to play e5, you have not h5. And why is that important? Because with my bishop on g5, I'm protecting this pawn. But in this position, I'm not. So if I start taking stuff, you just take right back. And everybody's happy and things just go crazy. All right? That's what happens. So that's the theory. Uh, if you don't play h6 before c5, I'm just going to take it, and now it's not so fun for you, because if you take it, then obviously I ruin your right to castle, and it's not good. Um, and also, if you castle, which is what you did, I should have just played e5, and then you, you would have been a real hurt. I, I always forget in bullet, I think I've even, this is like a deja vu, except minus the Texas accent. When I play e5, and y'all take, and I take, this position is just completely lost for you. You're losing the pawn. You can't play h6 no more, because I'm going to take here, and when you take my bishop, I get your bishop. If you do the math at the end of that, that's, uh, you know, that's one tool short of a toolbox. That's also something someone from Texas would say, right? I know there's somebody out there from Texas right now who's like, I literally hate this guy. I hate this guy's guts. I don't know what he's doing or who he thinks he is, but that's what I'm doing. Um, okay, so this is lost for you if you allow, like literally, it's just horrible. And I had a guy playing like this for so long, and black is just in a terrible way. I mean, white has achieved the, Aust the Austrian uh, goal with e5. I'm already pushing you back, and this is a huge space advantage. So... What did you learn from this whole Texas accent experience? You learned that um, that you need to play... Okay, Castles is a blunder. I should have played E5, but I ended up getting the same kind of tactics. I mean, after what happened, um, you know, if you take back on D8, just, every, you know, E7 falls and you're already down a pawn and probably positionally worse to go with it. So um, the only way you can justify C5 without A6, by the way, is this move. After C5 takes, you have to play this move because you threaten Knight takes E4. And, uh, you know, depending on what we want to do here, I don't remember. What am I supposed to do here? I don't want to work today. I don't want to think about chess today because I don't have the brain power. Is it just bishop d3? Do I just ignore it? I feel like there's something wrong with this move order for black. Because this is a theoretically known position, but only after h6. Okay? h6 is supposed to be the move and then c5, and then takes queen a5. This is like theory. Now I play bishop d3. You take with the queen. We transpose into a Sicilian-type structure. This is actually the main line here. So maybe maybe the exact position I'm trying to figure out actually isn't theory because we only reached it due to mutual blunders. You blundered, and I should have played e5, and then I blundered by not playing e5. So then we get c5, and we're kind of right back in this scenario where, where maybe I don't have a way to just clearly punish you anymore if you had played queen a5. I don't know. I'm not a scientist. Why doesn't somebody go ahead and look it up and give us the scientific answer? Okay. Um, I hope I didn't offend. I did hope we didn't chase away too many people with that Texas accent. But I ain't going to stop because I'm talking about global warification and strategification of our military line. I'm, I'm, talking, about, I'm talking about practice, all right? We're talking about practice. I've noticed that not many people get my NBA references. I'm sure somebody will know that that was oh. Allen Iverson. But, you know, chess in the NBA doesn't seem to cross over very much. Um, okay, let's take on somebody new. I'm looking for somebody who was, who was talking to me on Twitter. If you're not following me on Twitter, that's what the banner's there for, to let you know, at Daniel Wrench. And you can follow me on Twitter, have a chance to play. And I say that um, because... I, uh, I like to play people who say, you know, hey, will you play me on a bullet brawl? But I'm looking for this guy who says, my username is JoseLL23. JoseLL23. I'm going to start declining some others, Jose, so I can find you. Because I want those who follow me on Twitter to feel like I mean what I say. I want to be a man of my word. 
and I want to do what I tell people I will do. There he is. There's Jose. Jose LL23. You're welcome, world. That's right. I do make mistakes in life, but I always try to honor my word if I can't keep it. Okay? We try to, we try to, you are what your word says you are. You are what you say. So always do what you say. So if I say I'm going to play you, more likely chance I'm going to play you if you follow me on Twitter, I'm going to try to make that happen for you. I'm going to make this happen like a crazy unicorn attack. This is going to be like, this is going to be like some unicorns and some ninjas got together, right? They had a baby and then this is what happened. I, they, they launched a unicorn ninja attack on the world. Okay, you know what I'm talking about? It's a unicorn ninja attack, all right? I'm going to back up that queen and keep it on the diagonal. And I'm going to back up that queen again. And I'm going to go kick that knight. He's going to back up. I'm going to keep attacking him. I'm going to put that knight on d3. It's going to feel real nice. It's going to feel real, real nice. I'm going to put ooh, I'm gonna put a knight on d3 here. And it's going to feel real good. It's going to feel real, real nice. Now, that's an outpost square if you're keeping track at home. I'm going to go attack that pawn now. Now I'm going to play f5 because I want to expand here. I want to get g5 and f4 because I'm thinking if I... Oh, that's a little bit irritating. I didn't want to lose that bishop. But all right. I'm thinking if I can if I can expand and open up this diagonal, that could be a fun little way to play it. But no, we need to play positionally and use our advantages, which are focused over here on my knight being on d3. Now I'm going to go take on a4, likely, so I can put the rook on a2. Ooh, he plays that way. I'm going to go take here and get that rook to c2. I can take it. I know I lost the pawn. I know. But, I, I mean, I know I lost the knight, but I got a whole lot of stuff for it, didn't I? Oh, I have to be very careful here. Don't blunder away the game. Takes, takes, shake and bakes. Shake and bake. I did it. I defended against the coming threats. The war on terror begins. There we go. That's a winning rook ending for everybody and their friends. Everybody and their friends. That is a winning rook ending, and we like it. All right. I went on time, but that was an unrated game. All right, Jose. You're welcome, buddy. Thank you for following me on Twitter. Thank you for being a supporter of Chess.com and the Bullet Brawl. You are a premium member. That means I love you. I love everybody, including non-premium members, but obviously I love premium members as well. I, I shouldn't have to dis explain myself, should I? Now you guys are discriminating against me. All right, so we got some other people. Um, there was another guy. Where is he? Oh, here he is. M. Rodriguez, 2013. You are the you were the first person to tweet at me and ask to play. So I'm going to decline some of these other challenges, so I can get to M. Rodriguez, 2013, because I told him I would play him. There's a lot of challenges here, though, buddy. I'm sorry. I'm going to do a hard refresh and see if that gets rid of all these challenges, so I don't have to decline them all manually. You know why? Because I'm lazy. I have no shame in that. Because. Uh, Okay, M. Rodriguez, 2013. Bad news, buddy. It did not get rid of all the challenges, so now I just got to decline everybody manually. It's not that I don't want to play you guys, but I'm trying to play the people who I promised I would play on Twitter. We already did the whole speech about being a man of your word, a person of your word. Oh, oops. I clicked accept instead of decline. Sorry, but mind chaos. Welcome to the big show. Uh, actually, it's the Bullet Brawl. It's not the Big Show because there actually is a Big Show. So using that term sort of loosely is like you know making it to the big dance, like you know like an, when an elf makes it to Santa's workshop, that kind of thing, you know. Um, so I'm trying here to get to some of the other challenges. I know, and now I'm getting a ton of followers and tweeters here, and I will not be able to get to everybody, but a lot of people tweeting their username. We will try to make it happen. Nickname Nick Mata. I see you. I see Two Bra. I see uh, William Tente. I see uh, Victor Holland. I've played you before, though, Victor, so I feel like it's kind of unfair. All right. But we're going to play Victor. Cause he oh, there's Nick Mata right there. All right, Nick, you're next, buddy. You are next. What's your username, Javi? What's your username, man? What's your username? Tweet me your username. Show yourself. There it is. 
All right, we're playing a dragon. Dragon. Knight takes c6. Not the best cup of tea for white to drink in this position. All right, we're gonna just we're gonna go for the attack. We are gonna go for the attack. He would like to trade queens, but we say nay. Negev negevarito, which is a snack you can pair with favoritos, which also goes well with doritos. Negative arito. So negative arito to you, Mr. Victor Holland. Not happening. All right. All right, Javi's next because he's a... Uh, He's just awesome. One of the most interesting people that I have come to know via via Twitter. That's what I love about Twitter. You just you get to know people in different circles who you never otherwise would have been able to see what they were doing. I like that. It, that that's what makes it different than Facebook. It's not about like sharing friends and sharing information just with your friends, right? I'm personally not a big fan of Facebook, so I don't want to talk bad about it right now because you guys are like, what? I don't even get Twitter. Like, you know, like, what do you mean? It's only 140 characters? I have more to say than that. And I'm like, look, dude, if you can't tell me what you're trying to say in 140 characters or less, I don't want to hear it. You know what I'm saying? Um, anyway, no, that sounded harsh. But okay, Nick Mata, welcome to the show, man. You follow you follow us on Twitter. You're a big part of what we do here on Chess.com. You are a Diamond member, and we love that about you. So we are developing into a Verisoft. Um, now it's getting weird. I don't know that either one of us... Oh, I should have played E6 there. If he takes, it would have been Chekalina La Schlamba. Boomtown. I'm going to back up and show you guys what I'm talking about for those who didn't follow it. Because that would have been funsies. Real funsies if I had played E6 and actually managed to break things down. Okay, but now we're going to castle long anyway. and We're just going to try to bust this thing open. Yeah, we're just going to bust it open. Go for the whole thing. We're going to Bob Barker this. We are rocking it. There's too many options in this position. Should I just... I think I should just take E7. I don't even know. I mean, am I not mating you somehow? I Don't I have some kind of check or something? What's going on here? I think I have this check now. Yeah, I, wait. Is, I, you're, you're, you're surviving this? What are you doing? Stop surviving this. Okay. You've got to be kidding me. Where's the win, everybody? Somebody help me out here. Check up. I'm going to lose on time trying to solve the win. So I'm not going to try to solve the win. I'm just going to make a move. Ooh. Now I have this check, maybe? Now we have this check? Now we have that check? Now we go... Oh, no, we have mate. Mate one. Boom. All right, well, I managed to break through just in time. Somebody just asked where you get this hat, and there's the evil bedhead. This, you get this hat at WholesaleChess.com. They are a supplier. Somebody can share a link to Wholesale Chess, and you can see that it is a Chess.com hat because our pawn logo is the bee's knees. You know what I'm talking about? All right, we're going to go look for Javi, as we promised we would. And I'm not discriminating against fans who are uh, who are not following me on Twitter. It's just that, you know, like I said, trying to do what we say we're going to do and just had a lot of fun. All right, there he is, Javi Soto. Follow Javi on Twitter because he's awesome. All right, Javi, I'm going to bring you the Verisoft. I'm going to bring you the heat. All right, we'll see if you can handle the heat. All right. We'll go this way. Oh, I always make this mistake. Yeah, now I got to be, now I'm blundering my way out, out of an opening which is never fun. So we're just going to play some weird stuff. We're just going to play some weirdness. Start launching that attack. You know how it is. Get that attack going. Uh, let's just play it right away. Let's just take it right away. I know he's going to take, but I'm just going to take with the knight. Because if he takes with check, I'll happily put that king on f2. And I think that actually helps my attack that he played this move order. Because he's clarifying my ability to develop. He's sort of helping me to get all these guys out. And that's going to help this attack get, get rolling here. Alright, I can take e6 with tempo and then take on g5. I'm not even sure I should take on g5 though. But because it's a piece sack and because I have a lot of fun when I sack pieces, I'm just going to do it. Um, oh, I would love to play bishop d3 check and go to sack town again, but first I'm going to guard f3 so I can swing the queen over 
to uh, to the G file. Now we are threatening rook to G7, which is probably enough to bring home the bacon, the big bacon. Oh, and that's checkmate. All right, Javi, you're the man. We love you. Javi and his brother actually just wrote one of the coolest apps available, probably the coolest app available for the Apple Watch. What's the Apple Watch? I don't have one either, okay, so don't pretend. I'm not, I'm not uh, getting an Apple Watch. But they wrote the, um, an app that updates, the, uh, that updates the owners of the app with, with real-time um, scores from top tournaments as games finish and uh, all kinds of stuff. We're hoping to work with them, and we want to do something similar on chess.com, but we love what they did for the Apple Watch. So Javi and his brother, Nacho Soto, are just awesome. Anyway, um, we got some others coming in, but we're actually going to bring this thing to a close. It's about 40 minutes. Pro tip, I haven't eaten since I went to the gym. You shouldn't do that. Pro tip, don't do that. So I'm really hungry, and I want to go eat. And we, uh, I think it's a good place to bring it to a close right now. So I appreciate everyone's time here. Go ahead and send us messages next week before the bullet brawl begins. And uh, we will uh, we'll try to look for you and your username on chess.com. And uh, peace out. Peace out to everybody. Peace and love.